Hey kids, it's Jason Feinberg, and I'm here in the Big Easy on Bourbon Street. My team is doing so bad, I had to come out here and give them a little pep talk, if you know what I mean. But Mike Davis is back in studio. The Fantasy Goat starts right now. This is the Fantasy Goat, sponsored by Casablanca Resort and Casino, like Vegas used to be. Take a look at that. Yes, my partner in crime, Jason Feinberg, is in New Orleans, hanging out on vacation, and uh, we wish him the best. But, Jason, we upgraded with the great Brandon Marshall. Played in two big games. He's a champ, former champ. Uh, Brandon, great to be with you. We're going to kick off livestock right now. One of the big issues that is, you know, really plaguing the league right now and fantasy football managers is injuries. So many injuries this year. It started with Aaron Rodgers, and now this, this week alone we got Debo, we got McCaffrey, Richardson's on IR out for the rest of the year. We got Jefferson, Montgomery, all these guys. Mm -hmm. What's going on with the injuries in the league right now? I mean, we got to understand this is a, a, a high collision sport, right? It's, it's very hard on the body. You pound the joints consistently and going up against other grown men that run 4-4 four, four and, and about 250 pounds of full muscle. And even if they're a defensive back, um, they're still strong and fast. So this game is really tough and it's really hard on the body. When you're playing in the league for uh, how many seasons were you in the Eight league? Eight seasons. Eight seasons. So are you ever operating at 100% or is each season you're just kind of playing at 75% and that's just the yeah. normal of what it's like to play in the league? Yeah, I mean, you may be 100% for that first game. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it is still tough coming out of yeah. training camp. And, you know, because all the miles you put on your body, you know, all the hours and all the hitting you do in camp. But that first week is about the best your body's going to get. And even when you have a bye week, yeah. you know, you, you have some time to kind of, you know, relax, take off, just, you know, get your body a little, a little healthier, but you're still not right. Now, how critical is the bye? When you had a bye coming up in your schedule when you're in Denver, Jacksonville, how was it like a present from God? Was it like Christmas Day to get a bye? How critical was it for you? How did the yeah. team view it? I mean, it, it really depends. I think it depends on, on how you did individually and how the team was, right? So if the team had a bad stretch, the bye was good. It could reset you. Yeah. If you as a player had a bad stretch, right, you may want to, ah, you know what, Maybe I need to take this week to kind of study film and see what I need to get better yeah. on. Uh, if you had a good stretch, you know, you kind of feel good. Like, okay, cool, you know, I've been playing well. So I, I really think it depends on the player and see, where the team is at. And this week there's actually – this is the first week six teams this season are on by. So a lot of managers are going to be streaming – quarterbacks, defenses, kickers, all those types of things. One more thing on injuries, though. Is there any credence to put into turf versus grass? Is that a real issue for the proclivity of injuries that we're seeing in Abs this? Absolutely. It no, is. No, it's a real thing. That's a and real problem. It's a real Why problem. Why is turf so bad? And so I, I never really understood the issue until I got older, right? And, Interesting. And once I got older yeah. and then I started you know, having some knee issues and we would practice on turf, versus grass, I felt the difference immediately. You know, it's just hard on your joints. It's just, it's stiffer, it doesn't give as much. So we love grass, every player loves grass. But when I was 22, 23, to yeah. me, it didn't really make a difference, you know what I'm saying? But it still does take a toll on your body, just pounding on that turf, pounding on that turf. Um, it, it can be detrimental to your, to your health. See, interesting, okay, that's great insight. Now, let's talk about something else here. Uh, everybody, uh, remembers from Monday Night Football, big fan, uh, a Bolts fan, Los Angeles fan, uh, is in the stands, and she is animated. <laughs> yeah. I mean, her name is Marianne Doe, and she's just going crazy. She's contorting her face in so many directions. Yeah. Honestly, Brandon, I have never been this excited about anything in my entire life. For a grown <laughs> woman to get this excited about a football game, I, I, I'm not sure if I should be angry or Give her a round of applause. If you, Brandon, if you told me right now, Mike, I'm going to give you a gift. You can go on a date with Megan Fox tomorrow mm -hmm. night. Mm -hmm. I would be excited. Yeah. I don't even know if I would be that excited, no, though, that's... as how she was. Yeah. What did you think about that, and how do you I interact with fandom for all these years? Now, as a former player, but also when you're a player, what do you think about this lady? It's funny, because people thought she was a paid actor. Actress, right, right, people thought she was a plant. Yeah. What do you think? And so, you know, I saw her in a, a Minnesota jersey a, 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 on, on, <laughs> right. on Twitter, right? So she I'm had like, like an Adam Thielen jersey, jersey like two years ago, right? Yeah, so I'm like, what's going on? But to see that type of excitement, I wish I could have that type of excitement about anything right now. When, life, when, you, know? when you were drafted, yeah. did you have that much excitement? Oh, I, you know, when I got drafted, it was almost like surreal, you know? I mean, <laughs> my mom was, she was crying and laughing at the same time, which was kind of weird. You know what I'm saying? My brother was excited. Everybody was excited. But were they that happy as uh, Marianne Doe? Not the, uh, no, no, not that excited. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we were happy, but 
her facial expressions, her desire, her passion for that game was just on another level. We have our hole in one player of the week, Brandon. Now this is the guy who's just balling out for the week. And of course this week it's Raheem Mostert. He's our hole in one player of the week from Casablanca Resort and Casino. So this guy, Brandon, hey, he had himself a day. He had 17 attempts on the ground, 115 yards, two touchdowns, and of course added another uh, touchdown through the air that totaled 32.7 fantasy points. He's running back two right now through the first six weeks of the season. When you're thinking about everything they're saying in Miami about, you know, the greatest show on surf, um, <laughs> is this more of a Raheem Mostert thing, or is it really a Mike McDaniel and this offense and a good, solid running back in that offense would be producing the way he's producing. Is it more Mostert or is it more McDaniels? It's more McDaniels. <laughs> <laughs> it's more McDaniels. You know, the way he cooks up his plays and the, the play design, you know, when I was watching that game when they just thrashed Denver, yeah. I was looking at some of the play designs. I'm like, okay, this is it's interesting. I really uh, am intrigued by how he's setting up some of the run plays But because de when Devon Achan gets in there, he yeah. kind of does the same thing. He right? looks more special to me, and oh, that's yeah. why this brings up a great point. Let's loop in producer James Edward Barrickman the fourth. Yeah, he's got, he's got a fourth. I don't know, if he had a jersey, he'd have that IV. Um, James, uh, I'm feeling bad, man. We had this bet. Explain the bet and how uh, I'm really in a bad position right now. Uh, yeah, so we had that bet earlier in the earlier in the year, where I, th I think it was you were on Devon A. Chan to finish higher as far as fantasy rankings go, right? Than Raheem Mostert. I'm Raheem Mostert. I'm on the Raheem Mostert side. Uh, loser of this bet has to take a doll on a date. Do you believe this? A doll on and, a date. Yeah, this is not like going on a date with Megan Fox. Yeah. The only thing that could be worse than going on a date with this doll could be going out with Marianne Doe, but that's, that's a low blow. But <laughs> no, but I, it looks like, James, this is what's going to happen right now. Since eight chans on IR, Mostert's killing it, and what can you do? Miami's just a firepower offense. They got a tough battle this week ahead against Philadelphia. But coming up after a short break, I know Marianne Doe would be, yes, she would be, this would be her face right now. As she knows we have another interview coming up after the break with Brandon Marshall. She'd be like, yes, let's do it. That's her face. We got more of Brandon Marshall coming up after a short break. Before we head to break, in week 7 of 2006, which Philadelphia running back had himself a day rushing for 101 yards and catching 7 passes for a touchdown and adding another 113 yards receiving? He finished with 30.9 points. The answer after the break. Welcome back. Before the break, we asked you in week seven of 2006, which Philadelphia running back had himself a day rushing for 101 yards and catching seven passes for a touchdown and adding another 113 yards receiving, finishing with 30.9 points. The answer, Brian Westbrook. All right, so welcome back. We're here with the champ. Brandon Marshall. Brandon, did you ever get upset that there was the other Brandon Marshall, the wideout? Like, did it did it make you want to, like, add a middle name or something to your name? You know what? Uh, at, at one point, I kind of started to put the M because my middle name is, is, is Markeith, right? So Brandon M. Marshall, oh. just to distinguish myself. Yeah. But it never really truly bothered me to the core. You know, some people always ask me, oh, did you? Did you get mad? Do you get mad? No, I understand. It's, it's all good. I'm really easygoing. Yeah, yeah. Understanding person. Nothing really but like bothers me too See, much. See, there you go. Okay, yeah. now let's talk about this because I think a lot of people want to know, as this is a fantasy football show, the way that you interact with fantasy football yourself. As a player, as a former player, were you into fantasy football when you were actually playing on Sundays? Yeah, I mean, the, game, the year that we won the big game, uh, 2015, was my first year actually playing fantasy football. And uh, I remember myself just sitting in the locker room, right, me and Shaq Barrett, before the game, setting our lineup, <laughs> you know, deciding, okay, oh, we play against Kansas City today. Do we start Jamal Charles or not? You know what I mean? And, and it's funny because I, I really felt like I had a beat <laughs> on, on, on a lot of people because I was in training camp and I knew not to draft Peyton Manning. You know what I'm saying? See? Just because the offense that, you know, Kubiak brought, you know, how Peyton looked. I'm like, okay, well, I'm not going to draft 
Peyton and Michael Draft Emmanuel and or or Demarius because of how Peyton looks. So you had some good intel, and now yeah. as a former player, I mean, do you you can I'm sure you still have access to a lot of good yeah. intel and just knowledge. So how is it interacting with fantasy football now? Well, it's a little different because I'm not you know in it right, so I don't have that firsthand intel. But you know, um, just kind of just being around the game and understanding football. You know, it's and sometimes it's, it's a guess. You know, you think and, and then, you know, that clock is ticking. So as you're drafting, you're like, well, you know, what do I do? Who do I pick running back? You know, wide receiver. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I, I still do well. I made the championship last year. I won the championship, you know, two years ago. So um, I can't let you go without talking about, you know, Denver with yeah. you. What is going on? I mean, Sean Payton <laughs> yeah. is supposed to be an offensive genius. Denver, for so many years, we were known for defense. It was yeah. solid defensive teams. This team, the defense is dreadful. The offense, it can't score. I, what's going on? You know what? It's, it's tough to say. You know, the defense have been good for about seven years strong. Yeah. You know, from that big game to, to last year. And then, you know, they brought a new D coordinator. Um, they're just not in sync. You know, it seems like the organization, the organization in itself is just at a disarray, right? It just yeah. seems like it's, you know, Russell Wilson isn't who they thought he was, right. right? You know, obviously he was an elite quarterback for a long time, but to pay that man $250 million, yeah. you expect him to go out there and win games. Not manage games, not play, you know, above right. average, but win games, and he hasn't been able to do that. So, you know, that whole franchise, it seems like they need to start over. Great stuff with Brandon Marshall, the former champ. You can check the whole interview out on our YouTube page. That's Silver State Sports and Entertainment Network. But now we got to talk injuries. Here's Dr. Nathan Natwa. The progress Aaron Rodgers is making in New York, is this a guy who can actually come back and potentially play for your team if you're in the fantasy playoffs? Yeah, it's a great question. The thing about what Rodgers is doing is he's doing daily activity from what I'm seeing. So he's walking in a very rigid brace that's usually concealed by his clothing. We don't see a lot of flexion in that ankle that was repaired. He is doing stuff at an accelerated rate, but I don't see him doing anything that I would expect to be unanticipated for someone that wants to be pushing it, pushing the bill a little bit. With that being said, this surgery is a novel surgery. It hasn't been done in the majority of any kind of Achilles rupture, and it definitely hasn't been done in an athlete as high level as Aaron Rodgers. So I do think if I'm having to put money on this or anything like that, I would say that, yeah, he can return back, but I wouldn't think that he would be an effective player. And that's mainly because when you tear the Achilles, that's widely known to be one of the worst injuries you can suffer in sports. That's not life-threatening. And you have to be younger, typically, to have an optimal recovery process as opposed to older. Before we take another time out, in week seven of 2002, which New Orleans wide receiver caught eight passes for 109 yards and two touchdowns for a total of 26.9 points? The answer after the break. Welcome back. Before the break, we asked you in week seven of 2002, which New Orleans wide receiver caught eight passes for 109 yards and two touchdowns for a total of 26.9 points? The answer, Joe Horn. Welcome, kids, back to the Fantasy GOAT. Okay, we're starting off GOAT vision with quarterbacks, of course. Right now, this is who I'm really loving for this week. Yeah, it's going to sound weird, but Sam Howell is actually having a sneaky good season. This guy is definitely someone you can stream as we're seeing buys start to impact our lineups, but he's actually potentially a starter if you've had guys go down. He had three TDs last week uh, against a tough game in Atlanta, but I actually really like what he's doing. He's had 25 points the week before. He's got a lot of people to throw the ball to, but he's a sneaky good play. And this week against uh, New York, I really like to see what he can do, and I think he's going to have a strong week. Now, the guy I'm not feeling so much, Jordan Love. I think this is a big test for this guy to see if he truly is the franchise quarterback in Green Bay. He's facing Denver, okay? If he's not going to produce against Denver, then <laughs> Green Bay's got a big problem. He was on the bye last week. The week prior, though, we all remember that game against Vegas. He had three interceptions, really looked awful. So listen, this is a do-or-die week for Jordan Love, and I'm really curious to see what he's going to 
drum up. Now, as we're moving on to running backs, my dude, Kenneth Walker, I love this guy. He's a solid, solid play week in, week out. He's got a very favorable matchup against Arizona this week, so that's who I'm feeling. But I want to loop in producer James Edward Barrickman, the fourth. Uh, James, Craig Reynolds, he threw the block of the year last week, but now this guy's filling in potentially for David Montgomery. What do you think about him and the whole Jameer Gibbs situation? Yeah, so to me, this is really more about Jameer Gibbs. Uh, this week will really tell the tale about how Detroit feels about Jameer Gibbs. This is the guy they took 12th overall yeah. in the first round of the draft, um, and they haven't really used him at all. I mean, David Montgomery's been the bell cow, but now Montgomery's out for a bit. We don't really know quite how long. Jameer Gibbs should be the guy over Craig Reynolds. And if he's not the guy over Craig Reynolds the at this point, <laughs> yeah. it's a wasted pick. Why did you even take the guy? Well, listen, let's slow our horses for one second. They are 5-1. and one. They look like one of the best teams in the league. But, yes, this should be the coming out party this week for Jameer Gibbs, and they should use him. But, listen, Craig Reynolds, he's the pride of Cutstown, so you got to love that guy. And two guys I'm not feeling so much this week, uh, Austin Eckler and Alexander Madison, both Two matchups that are not so favorable. Eckler, he's got to face a tough KCD and uh, Madison going against San Francisco. So two guys I'm not feeling so much. Coming up after a short break, kids, we got more Goat Vision. We got to talk tight ends and wide receivers. We got all that stuff coming up after a short break. Welcome back to the Fantasy Goat. Okay, Goat Vision time. Let's start off with wide receivers. Listen, I'm all in this mood of sneaky selections to help during this time where we have six teams on by. One guy who's probably on your waiver wire, Curtis Samuel in Washington. He scored a TD in the last three games consecutively. So this guy is a good sneaky pick, and he's really getting all that production that Jahan Dotson was supposed to be seeing. The other guy I'm kind of interested in is Rasheed Rice with Kansas City. I mean, nobody has been really a bright spot on that offense besides Travis Kelsey. And this guy really leads that team in all receiving yards beyond Kelsey for that wide out, wide out spot. So I'm really into him. He's going up against, you know, a, a Bolts team that ranks uh, third worst against the wide receiver spot. So I like Rasheed Rice for this week. And lastly, a guy I'm not really feeling anymore. I think it's time to be done with the Jerry Judy experiment. He is no longer a relevant fantasy starter for teams. Maybe he's on your bench, but I would drop him. I mean, three catches for 2.9 points last week. He hasn't seen eight targets all season long, hasn't gotten in the end zone, and I don't like him against a Green Bay team. So I'm out on Jerry Judy. Now let's transition over to tight ends. All I want to say is Sam Laporta, I love you. I, I wish you were on my team. You are killing it. You're number two in, uh, in fantasy for all tight ends, five points behind Travis Kelsey. Sam Laporta is the guy. He's consistent, and he has that potential to bust out week in, week out. I love you. Uh, James Edward Barrickman, the fourth. I know you want to say something about one of the guys I'm not feeling so much. That guy is Kyle Pitts, even though he's had some bright spots in the past couple weeks. Yeah, I am with you on Kyle Pitts. Uh, he's out-targeting his counterpart, Jonu Smith, by two, 35-32 to 32 since week two. But Jonu's outscoring him. Jonu Smith is tight end nine. Uh, Kyle Pitts is tight end 12. That's not a good sign for Kyle Pitts, who was a first-round pick, really highly touted prospect to be being outscored by a journeyman tight end in Jonu Smith. I don't see much changing um, as far as that production goes, Kyle Pitts has shown us who he is as far as a fantasy uh, target through the years. I think we should believe him. I'm still leaning Smith if I had to pick between the two. Very interesting. I just don't like the whole mess in Atlanta to begin with. I do like, though, naming your child John U. Like, rather than just doing John, everybody does John. John U is kind of cool. Guys, coming up after a short break, we got, guess what, goat lineup time. We got to figure out who is the goat this week. It's a lot of stuff to, to discuss. We got more coming up after a short break. What can I say? I mean, this was definitely not, you know, uh, Marianne Doe, a, a lated face Mike week for me. Uh, listen, GOAT lineup, you guys know the rule book. This is where we can't use the same player twice. Jason and I go head to head. I lost by five points this week. 
kids. I, I mean, I don't know what to say. We're both three and three now. Producer James Edward Barrickman, the fourth. Uh, I'm down in the dumps. I don't know what to tell you, Mike, because you are in trouble. All I'll say is you better start looking for your favorite diner to take that doll on a date to. I don't know what to say. If you forget about this bet that we made early on in the Fantasy Goat, let's play back this clip and just take a look at how stupid I was to accept this fate from Jason Feinberg. Well, producer James, he said, you know what, there's this trend out there, how about you lock yourself in a diner and you have to be there for 24 hours, but every pancake you eat, it, it takes one hour off the top. So if you, you know, have 12 pancakes, you only have 12 more. All right, you know what, stop, just stop this. We've had enough of this clip. Let's go out and see what Jason's GOAT lineup is this week. Let's go out to the Big Easy. All right, kids, I just jogged the Riverwalk here in New Orleans and I thought about my GOAT lineup. So here it goes. I wanted to take Joe Burrow, the quarterback from LSU, but I took him last week and he's on a bye. So I'm going to take Josh Allen. For a wide receiver, I wanted to take Jamar Chase because he also went to LSU, but they're on a bye. So I'm gonna take AJ Brown. For running back, I wanted to take Alvin Kamara because I'm here in New Orleans, but he already played. So I'm gonna take Kenneth Walker. And for a tight end, I wanted to take anybody from LSU, but you know all the tight ends are from either Iowa or Notre Dame, so I'm taking Michael Mayer from Las Vegas. We're three and three, Mike, so this is gonna be advantageous to whoever wins this week. I'm out. Okay, so this is what needs to happen. Jason needs to have a big, fat old beignet for his lineup this week. This is what I'm doing for my GOAT lineup. We got Geno Smith at QB, Kareem Hunt, who's definitely trending upwards. I'm banking on that consistency from Curtis Samuel in Washington. He's found the end zone each of the last three weeks. And Michael Mayer uh, doing a good job with um, Vegas right now. So that's my team. Jason, have a good, safe trip back. Enjoy yourself in the Big Easy. Bring me back something, Louis Armstrong, Satchmo. That's, that's my dude. And bring me back a beignet. We'll see you next time on the Fantasy Goat. It's not looking good for me. Three and three, big momentum shift. Next week, I'm coming for Jason.